Hey guys, NJ here. So today we're talking about rates and gains on the Avata 2 for Freestyle Acro. Uh, why are we doing this video? Because since I put these two videos out, it seems across all my socials that the most reoccurring comment has been, what are your gains, bro? Um, and the rates and gains, it's such a subjective thing. If I could just put a screenshot up, and show you my rates and gains you might go out try them and absolutely love them or you might absolutely hate them but if we understand what all those things do then you have a much better chance of getting this quad to feel the way you want it to feel and get a better connection with it and that will ultimately lead to better piloting it's subjective so let's take some time to understand it let's get started okay so in the goggles you're going to need to go over to the gain and expo uh, menu which you can see here this is actually a screenshot of where my rates are now um, I say now because I've only flown this thing maybe four or five packs and I'm constantly learning more about the limitations of the drone and, the, and feeling it out and this will probably change again uh, which reinforces what I was saying about if you understand what it is these things do then you can tune it to best suit you like I said very subjective thing uh, but let's just go through a couple of those things quickly so center sensitivity is pretty much exactly what it what you think it is um, I would kind of consider it like a dead band really uh, and straight out of the gate um, DJI do actually have the your value quite a lot lower than the roll and pitch and there's a good reason for this um, and this is because when you're flying freestyle uh, or in manual mode generally and I'll show you here with the goggles uh, with the goggles with the controller in my hand is that although you're usually quite smooth on say the pitch and the roll and the yaw um, when it comes to moving the throttle around you're often going to be often on that an awful lot I mean there are instances where you're right down at zero and then you might punch up to a hundred um, and when you're doing that, you'll find, and if you've got the remote in your hands, take a close look at this while you do it yourself, you'll find it's very hard to move between those two points and not accidentally ever so slightly nudge your. So that is why you want to increase the dead band or the dead zone on your so that those tiny little nudges that you make accidentally when you're moving from zero to 100 in the throttle throughout that range isn't coming out in your in your flying you don't want to be punching up with loads of throttle and then finding that the it's twisting off to one side and I've heard people who've who've had exactly that only to find out this was the problem they needed to increase the the dead zone around your so I think that I have it slightly lower than where it was from stock but yeah 50 is good for me but if you find your you as you're using the throttle it's it's twisting a little bit then that's the number you reduce. Reduce the sensitivity even more. Go to 40 or even 30. See how that feels. But that's where we are with center sensitivity. Again, I have it uh, a little less on pitch because when I'm flying uh, with the pitch sensitivity a little too high, as I'm doing roll maneuvers, again, as you're moving to the extremes of the roll, uh, which I can show you here, I'm going from left to right, you kind of have the same thing. You could do a roll, but accidentally just nudge a little bit of pitch in where you don't want it. So it's exactly the same thing. So this is where I have it, but hopefully now you understand the point of the center sensitivity. Moving over to your rate. Now the rate is uh, in degrees per second. So you can see my roll is set at 550 degrees per second. Um, and I think that's a little bit higher than stock. I tend to have my roll higher than my pitch. Um, I usually find a comfortable point at which when I do a complete uh, full stick deflection forward flip, I tend to see how that feels if I overshoot it and I end up with my nose down, then I would reduce that figure. So from 500 down to whatever the next step is down and try it. Uh, and and that's how I tend to judge it. I'll do a complete flip and I'll see whether I end up undershooting or overshooting that flip. Uh, and that gets me a, a feel for pitch. With roll, it could be down to a few factors. So, and again, let me point out, this is full stick deflection. So when I roll all the way off to the right, so, I right, so I'm basically bottoming that out all the way over, that is the maximum rate that it's going to do in degrees per second. OK, in terms of how fast it's going to roll around and come back to where you were. 
Now, where, you can use that same kind of logic if you get through it and you find you're constantly undershooting and not getting back to horizon level when you do a complete roll, then maybe start upping that rate. Find a place where that's comfortable. Another factor could be if you do like the altitude at which you do your maneuvers. So for me, I sometimes do rolls very low to the ground. Now, a slow roll would mean I wouldn't get round the roll um, before hitting the ground. So I need to increase the speed of it. If you're up high and you prefer nice, slow, cinematic rolls, then reduce that max rate. OK, take the same thing for all three. When it comes to your... I would normally have that a little higher, but again, as I've explained in my previous videos, one of the quirks of the Avata 2 is that they're not great in your maneuvers. Um, and go back and watch my other videos where I talk about that in a lot more depth. It's just a quirk that you have with um, quads like this that have the prop guards and ducks. You're, yours not the best friend of that of that style of design, so I tend to run that a little lower. And also my piloting, I tend to avoid any your heavy maneuvers that I would do on my open prop freestyle quads. Okay, and then over to Expo, which is our last uh, topic here. Now this stands for your exp exponential curve, uh, and what we're dealing with here is how linear that throw is between, uh, so let's take roll again as the example, we're in the center of the stick, when I go all the way off to the, to the right for a right roll, that can be linear, so halfway between those points is exactly 50% of that rate of roll, all the way over to the end of the stick, which will be that full rate of roll. Yeah. So with an exponential curve, what you're doing is you're you're basically as you increase that, you're flattening out that center point to the mid stick point. Right. So you'll find that you'll have less and less between zero and mid stick and then it will accelerate up the curve and become a lot more aggressive towards that maximum roll rate at the very full stick deflection. If, if you had an expo of zero, it would just be linear. So between those two points at 50%, you're at 50% of the value of the end. And if you add a curve in, an exponential curve, you're basically lowering the sensitivity. In other words, you'll get to 50%. And if you've got a really extreme curve, you could have, can see, you might only have like a quarter of that value halfway across. And then as you then move from halfway across to all the way across, suddenly it accelerates up that curve and you get to uh, the max rate that you have put in your max rate column. So between where we are in the middle here and halfway, it's very controllable and nice and smooth. But then when I jam it all the way over, it will suddenly in that last part of the stick deflection jump up to that rate that you want so that you can get round a roll really quickly that's what that curve is so i this is where my curves are right and i find 0.62 maybe up to i think when i was on most of my beta flight quads i was i usually run an expo curve of uh, 0.7 um, but on this, I found 0.6 is it's a feel thing that felt pretty good. I could still have really smooth, nice control with a reasonable amount of stick deflection. But then, of course, as I go all the way over, I then get the full max rate that I've dictated in that middle column. So that is what you're trying to do. And the other thing as well here is obviously make sure that M mode altitude uh, attitude limit is unticked. Because if you've got an attitude limit, it will stop it being able to completely roll over. It will just get to whatever they deem is the maximum safe angle to stop the quad tipping over. And you'll, be, you'll never actually be able to complete a roll or a flip. So for full manual mode, you have to untick that and there'll be a warning with it. Um, but yeah, hopefully that makes more sense to you now. And when you go out and fly, take note of these things and start adjusting them to your preference, not to mine, to yours. What do you want from this? If you want it to feel nice and smooth around center, then the exponential curve is definitely going to be your friend. If you want at the end points to be a nice slow roll, bring your max rates down. If you want it to be a really rapid roll, then take your max rate up. But if you want the best of both worlds, nice and smooth around those, that first 50% of deflection all around the stick, you want it to be smooth there, exponential's your friend, but you still want the snap at the end, yeah. Set your rate to where you want it, set your expo to get that feel, and then set your sensitive center sensitivity based on 
when you're flying if you're accidentally nudging in other axes that you didn't intend to to throw in whilst you're doing your maneuvering hope that all makes sense um drop in the comments let me know how you feel about all that um and yeah we can do more videos like this let me know until then see you in the next one